I'm Alexandra Sullivan. I write on a blog called Transform Our Hearts, and also I'm a co-host of a podcast with a friend who's a priest, and the pod podcast is called Raising Saints, Helping Kids Hear God's Voice. We started that a couple years ago in hopes that we could um, help kids and their families grow in the faith. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, abandoning ourselves to, to providence and embracing the ordinary. Um, maybe that's my title. I don't know. I don't really have a title. But that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, let's do a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, be with us today. Let us know that you are with us always and that you love us always. Help us to see you in our midst, in our day-to-day -day life. Help us to trust in you and to grow closer to you and to allow ourselves to abandon ourselves to your providence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So I wanted to start off today taking a, a high-level look at what's been going on in our lives and to offer some suggestions on a, on a global scale, not a very specific scale, because obviously each of us is having a very unique uh, experience of this pandemic and the stay-at-home orders. And each of us is in, obviously in a different place in the world or in the country. I'm in New York, and here in New York, we have um, stay-at-home orders for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm only about an hour outside of New York City. Um, we have a, quite a lot of cases in my county, a lot of hospitalizations. So for now, we'll be staying home. Uh, masses are not reopening. And I'm very excited for those of you who are in places where masses are reopening and that you're accessing the sacraments now. Um, and I hope that in the future, nearer than not, we get to have the same. But right now, we are still stuck. So I'm going to talk as if we're still stuck knowing that you might be in a place where you're out, allowed out now more or access to, um, to more businesses and um, interactions as well. So from my standpoint, um, the situation can be very frustrating. I'm sure for all of us, it's very frustrating. We don't have an idea of um, when things will end. There's, there seems to be no end in sight. Um, we are being told where we can go and where we can't go, how we do that, how we can't do that. Um, we're not able to enjoy the people that we love and the places that we love and the activities that we love. Um, so much is out of our hands and out of our control, and that can be a very frustrating experience. Um, many of us are experiencing restlessness, discouragement, despair, worry, anxiety, uh, you name it, and it's there probably. Um, I was thinking of the Road to Emmaus story, which we heard just a couple of weeks ago. And Jesus had died, and these two disciples don't know what to do. They're really confused. They're like, what do we do now? Okay, we're, we're going to go back to our home, back to Emmaus maybe? I don't know. And they're really living in a state of confusion. Um, and as Jesus comes up to them, and they don't recognize him, the gospel tells us, that they were downcast. So they were feeling a lot of what we were feeling. They were in despair. They were downcast. And Jesus walked up alongside of them. And they were kept from recognizing him. And for whatever reason at that time, I don't know if it was for the because of the despair, because of their um, anxiety and, and sadness, they were not able to recognize him. And I feel like that's very, very similar to what we are experiencing now. Um, we just don't we just don't feel that God is in the midst of all this. Um, where is he? How, how do we find him in all this negativity, all this, uh, all these emotions that are just kind of weighing us down? Um, I came across a, a little quote from C.S. Lewis, and he says, Though our feelings come and go, God's love for us does not. So we need to keep that in mind. Our feelings are are things are valid things that we need to pay attention to but often they don't tell us the truth and the truth is that God is walking with us in our midst at, at every given moment and countless ages down through the year through the years through the centuries um, have taught us this lesson they they explain that 
There will be times when we feel abandoned by God or not able to sense his presence, uh, where we feel aimless, downcast, and dejected. We're going about life in confusion. There's dryness in our prayer. We just, we just don't know where God is. But that's not the end, and that's not the final say. I have been watching The Chosen series with my husband and now with my kids. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. But there's a scene during which Peter has just met Jesus and Jesus has asked him to follow him. If we remember, Peter is actually a married man. So he has to go tell his wife that he's going to go follow this man, the Messiah. And they're talking and he's afraid she's going to be upset. And he says to her, well, this is not going to be easy. And I loved her response. She said, when have things ever been easy? It's not our people's way. And it's such a truth of our humanity, of our experience. While we're here, easy is not our way. And we know that as Christians, um, suffering is going to be a part of our life. But we believe that there is goodness in that suffering, goodness to come from that suffering. So I think that this moment... Uh, could be a great opportunity if we choose to look at it with the eyes of our Christian faith. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm not minimizing the very negative things that people are, are experiencing. But if you're in a situation where you can spin this moment in a more positive light, um, not all of us are going to be able to do that or be in a place emotionally or physically uh, to be able to do that. But if we can, if we look at this with the eyes of faith, we can learn a few things. One, we can learn to abandon ourselves to divine providence. And I, and I know that's like a, that's like a Catholic catchphrase, uh, abandonment to divine providence. Um, and, and I'm no expert here, but I'd like to dive into that a little bit. Um, it could be an opportunity here for us to grow in virtue, specifically in humility, faith, and trust. And then lastly, um, this could be a chance for us to enter more fully into the spirituality of the ordinary. So using the ordinary day-to-day -day life that we're experiencing to grow closer to God. So I want to start with the, uh, the idea of humility and abandonment. So as humans, we are very keen on our pride and we think that we have the power to do what we want to do. And we want to... Um, figure out situations and push through and and understand and all these different things that come from pride and if we take a step back and realize that um, we are the creature and God is the creator and we cannot know the mind of God we cannot understand what he is working through all of this uh, but he will give give us glimpses of his understanding if we ask for it. So remember, his ways are not our ways and his peace is not our peace. We have a very limited idea of who God is and we often doubt how much he loves us. So if we can in humility say, I don't know it all, I am not God, I don't understand his ways, um, I think we'll be in a much better place. We need to stop trying to control and find a way out of this and to exert our will and desires in every scenario uh, because we are capable of nothing about God. So um, a lot of times we experience restlessness and frustration when we're trying to exert our own will or work things out on our own because we come up against walls. And we, we can't move forward and that is because of our human nature. But if we can turn that to God, um, we might be able to find a way out of that. So I've been reading uh, a lot during this quarantine, and the book that I'm currently reading is The Interior Castle by Teresa of Avila. Uh, and I would like to throw a little quote out here for you guys. Um, she's talking specifically about prayer time, but this could definitely be applied to just our general life experience right now. These periods of aridity may teach you to be humble and not make you restless, which is the aim of the devil. Be sure that where there is true humility, God will give a soul peace and resignation to his will. So aridity in prayer, yes, but also just um, 
life. Life is just frustrating and dry and um, all those things that we were talking about before. But if we can say, okay, that restlessness is not from God and give it over to, to, to God, um, knowing that we can't push through and make it all right by ourselves, God will give us peace. So that is where it, this rolls into abandonment to his providence. If we come to realize that nothing happens outside of God's will, we can look at this differently. God obviously doesn't will bad things to happen. However, he does allow things to occur in order to bring a greater good out of that bad situation. So in general, this pandemic is a bad thing, okay? We're not saying that God sent this, that God wanted this to happen. But this has happened. And what God will do is make something good out of it. Um, I was listening to a homily by Father Mike Schmitz. I love listening to his homilies. I try to catch up on them regularly. And this past weekend, he was talking about how we make plans and we don't consult God in many in many ways. So um, we like to plan everything. We want to plan what we're having for dinner. We want to plan what our career goals are. We want to plan what classes we're going to take in school. We want to plan our day and how we're going to tackle all our to-do lists. You name it, we have a plan. Often that plan is frustrated um, in many different ways. And we often find ourselves in a place that we did not plan to go. So clearly none of us plan to go here. None of us plan to be sitting in our homes, um, unable to be with family, friends, unable to work in many cases. And Father Mike was saying sometimes we need to look at the situation, remembering that nothing happens outside of God's providence, and say, instead of thinking, why am I stuck here? Well, why am I here and thinking rather maybe I was led here by God's plan so I don't understand it but for whatever reason God has put me here in this moment in this time in this place uh, suffering through this situation so Teresa of Avila again another great quote she says leave him to give us what he will whether water or drought for he knows what he knows best what is good for us. Thus we enjoy peace and the devil will have less chance to deceive us. So again, she's talking about peace. Giving this over to God and trusting in God's providence um, will bring us peace. So when I am restless and frustrated, can I turn towards God? Can I rest in the knowledge that God will take care of everything and make it better than we would have been able to make it? So this does require a bit of, of trust and faith, right? This is not an easy task, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it is. Um, again, countless saints have discussed this, and so therefore we know it must be a thing that uh, we need to, to approach. So how do we make an act of faith and trust in God's divine providence and mercy? Well, I think the first is being able to say to God, uh, I need your help, right? A lot of times we just don't bother doing that. We don't we don't turn to him and say, I need your help. Um, we can use our will to say, Jesus, I trust in you. And it's kind of like fake it till you make it. Um, you might not feel it right now, but if you keep turning towards him and saying, I trust you, I trust you, that will grow in time. And that allows room in our hearts for God to work. Often we don't receive the, the graces that God has in store for us because we don't ask. We simply continue to push through on our own. But he's there waiting to give us what we need. So if we turn to him again and again and, and saying a very simple, it can be very simple. Um, and we can do it all day long just saying, I need you or I trust you or one of my favorites, I believe, help my unbelief. Uh, whatever it is, just turning to him. And God bolsters our smallest efforts. He will make those small efforts so fruitful. Um, I do want to suggest here something that uh, could help here. I've started praying the litany of trust. Uh, I don't pray it as regularly now as I did maybe a year ago. 
but that was something that I really needed to work on at that time. The Litany of Trust is a, a very beautiful prayer written by the Sisters of Life. You can go to the Sisters of Life website and download a PDF right there. Um, and it's basically a list of different things that we struggle with and, and saying, deliver me from these things and I trust in you, Jesus. So it will, it will help in, in many ways. So, moving on from there. Um, we've abandoned ourselves to this situation, uh, abandoned this situation to God. We've said, okay, God, this is where you put me. I trust you. What's, what, what is something that productive that we could do? Because, you know, we love to be productive, don't we? And I think this is where self-reflection will come in. And turning to God and saying, what is the purpose of this present moment for me? God, what are you trying to show me and teach me in this situation? And this will be unique for each of us. Uh, but I did gather a couple of possible lessons to kind of get the juices flowing for you. So I wanted to go back to abandonment here. Uh, like I said, this is not an easy lesson. So perhaps just the act of trust and abandonment is the lesson that Christ is trying to teach you. It's a huge lesson and something that we have to persevere in and that we have to continually be working on and learning. Uh, it's not like a, mm, I got it, um, I've abandoned myself to his providence. No, it's something that has to be continually worked on. So perhaps that is the lesson here for you. Um, another idea is a deepening of prayer life. Maybe we've been neglecting God in the everyday and haven't been putting the same effort into prayer that maybe we should. So we need to really remember that God is our friend, that he is waiting to hear from us, um, that we can't just forget about him on a daily basis. And maybe this is an opportunity if you have more free time to spend it learning God's word, spending more time with the Bible, spending more time just in, in um, pondering these things, meditating, maybe perhaps through the rosary. Uh, for me, prayer time has been particularly difficult during this time because there's no schedule. We have three children, and we have a, a whole homeschooling distance learning that we're doing now, um, and all these things that we have to take care of, but no set schedule. So whereas I used to be able to get morning prayer in, uh, before getting kids off to school, our whole day has been rejiggered. So trying to figure out the new normal for us has been hard. So um, deepening prayer life is, is, uh, has been a little bit of a struggle for me. Uh, a third idea for you. Maybe it is a time for rooting out a particular vice or growing in a particular virtue. Sometimes when we're faced with challenging situations the ugliness in ourselves comes out and we realize that's something we need to focus on. So there is a possibility that right now you're finding there's an area in your life that you need to focus on. For me right now, um, just in general, I tend to be uh, a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to get things, I like to have things my way. I generally think that, um, the way that I do it is the right way, right? So these, these are can be strains, but they can also be vices. And so when we're dealing with people whom we're sent to love, um, those can be a detriment. And I'm finding that I, I might be losing my patience or getting frustrated at things that um, I really shouldn't be. So that's an area where I can spend some time now working. Um, so some reflection for you. Where are you struggling? Where are you finding? Um, generally, the places that I, I would look is, you know, where are you feeling negative uh, emotions is a good place to kind of turn inwardly and, and reflect on those things. And the last two lessons I want to group together. And I want to group them under the idea of the spirituality of the ordinary. Now, I don't know if that's a phrase. I kind of, maybe I read it somewhere. Anyway, I'm putting it together because right now we're separated from the sacraments. Many of us are. Some of us are getting back to it. So our experience of um, God's presence and spirituality through the sacraments is unavailable to us. 
So how do we experience um, God in our midst and, uh, you know, the sacramental life in our ordinary day? And one is kind of a broad idea that we can all accomplish. And that's finding joy because God is in our midst. So we're often in, in a situation where we're not experiencing his presence. We're not feeling his presence. But we know by faith that he is in fact there. So being able to flip our minds around and instead of lamenting, oh God, why is this happening? What, what is going on here? Maybe focusing in um, trying to find God in the middle of it all. Uh, because his presence can transform any situation. Noticing his presence in the ordinary um, helps us to lift our minds to him. And I'm going to have one last quote from Teresa of Avila for you here. We shall reach much greater heights of virtue by thinking upon the virtue of God than if we stay in our own little plot of ground and tie ourselves down, it to, down to it completely. So I'm thinking like if we keep our minds stuck in the here and now, stuck in the, oh, I have this to do or this is happening or whatever it is that's, that's keeping us down, if we turn our minds to God and say, okay, I know God is here. Let's, let's think on his goodness. Let's think on his love. And where am I finding that? Now, at first, it could be very challenging to find him. But slowly but surely practicing this, um, you will get better at it, really. So finding joy in our midst because God is here. And this last uh, section here, strengthening your domestic church and growing Christ in your family. So you may be living alone or you may not have a family uh, that you're raising right now or your kids may be grown. So this is going to be a little bit less applicable to you, but it's the situation where I find myself right now. So I'm going to address it briefly. Um, we know that the church teaches that our, our primary experience of God is in the home, in the domestic church. In our helter-skelter crazy life, often that can be neglected because we're running here, we're running there, we have this obligation, we have that obligation. Now all those things are cleared. So we can begin to refocus our energies and bring God into our daily life. And I was reflecting on this and thinking about um, the hidden life of the Holy Family in Nazareth. Um, when God came into this world, he came into the world in a family. And Mary and Joseph spent their entire lives revolving around God. God was their son. So everything they did was a service to God. But we know that Christ dwells within each of us. So Christ is in our family as well. So spending our lives in service to Christ could look a lot like spending our lives in service to our family. Um, when we begin centering our life around God, we begin offering him our daily tasks in a form of prayer. So changing that diaper is no longer just changing a diaper, but it's serving Christ. Or cooking that meal is no longer just getting food on the table, but it's nourishing the bodies that carry Christ. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And again, this is not an easy lesson, but it's something worth spending time on. Um, I read a, a beautiful book by Carol Hauslander called The Read of God, and it's a meditation on um, the Blessed Mother. And she was talking about the ordinary life of the Holy Family. And she says, It is God's will that Christ shall be born in every human being's life, and not as a rule through extraordinary things, but through the ordinary daily life and the human love that people give to one another. I think that pretty much sums up the domestic church. Um, our ordinary daily living of playing, learning, working, cooking, eating, loving, serving, and praying, we can allow our families to grow in wisdom and favor before God. And you'll recognize that phrase from... Um, the gospel story of finding Jesus in the temple. And 
I think it's Matthew, but it could be Luke. I don't have it written down offhand. But um, when they find Jesus in the temple, when he's 12 years old, he went back to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph, and, and the Gospel writer tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom and favor before God. And I always thought that was kind of a funny phrase, well, he is God, but it's just showing us a way. Um, the hidden life, the daily ordinary life, allows us to grow Christ's life within us. So, um, as we're thinking through this, and we're not sure what God is asking us in our daily life, um, it's usually the thing that's put right in front of us. Um, it's not usually the big thing. It's not usually the go out and feed the world. It's usually that little thing right in front of us. So what is that little thing? Cooking the meal, vacuuming the floor, making the phone call, giving a hug, and ignoring an annoying comment, uh, tying a shoe you've just tied three times in a row, accepting the interruptions, whatever it is. God's asking us in that moment to pay attention to him and to, to grow in our love for him. And really that, even though I'm talking about the domestic church, the church, the, the home life of the family, this could really apply pretty much to, to anybody. Um, the ordinary daily life and the human love that people give to one another. I'm going to wrap up here with those, those ideas. I hope they give you some food for thought and get your mind going and, and thinking about things differently. But I want to wrap up with the idea of hope and courage. So a lot of times we say, oh, I hope this pandemic will end, or I hope that I'll be able to see my friends, or I hope whatever. A lot of times when we say hope like that, it's kind of more of a wish. It's like wishful thinking or, or just um, maybe a, an optimism that soon everything will be fine. And those are very uh, superficial ideas of hope. Um, and hope is really... Um, well, God is our hope. He is our hope, and he is the means to attain it. It is a gift from God. It's a theological virtue. So God has to bestow hope upon us to be, for us to be able to exercise hope. But it gives us the longing for eternal life with him and allows us to know that God wants that for us. So that's available to us, and God wants that for us. And we can hope that that is attainable because it is what he wants for us. So um, when we say I, we put our hope in God, we put our hope in God that he will give us what we need so that we may achieve everlasting life with him. Sometimes life is, too, is, is more than we can bear. The, the burdens are heavy. It feels like hope is lost. But if we realize that hope is God and God will allow us to come through this, um, we'll be okay. And I have a quote from St. Francis de Sales about courage. And a lot of this is hard, right? A lot of this, it doesn't seem manageable, doesn't seem possible. And he's talking about, um, he says, When you gaze upon the steep mountain of Christian perfection, you exclaim, How shall I ever ascend it? And it does seem daunting and hopeless. But he says, We are gradually being formed by our desires and resolutions. Our wings are beginning to grow, and so one day we may hope to be perfected and mount upwards. Meanwhile, let us feed upon the pious instructions left to us by holy men of old, and let us beseech God to give us the wings of the dove, so that we may not only fly in this present life, but also find our rest in the eternity of what, that which is to come. So that is more hope, right? Hoping that God will give us what we need. And I'm going to end on a high note here. I'm going to end with uh, maybe... Maybe you're like us and you've been watching a lot of Disney movies. That's something we've been doing as a family. And one of the movies we've watched recently is Frozen 2. And uh, there's a song in Frozen 2. It's probably everybody's least favorite song, but I actually really enjoy it. It's called The Next Right Thing. And Anna has just realized that her sister Elsa is probably gone for good. And she put all her hope in Elsa. So she's feeling desperate and lost. 
and she doesn't know what to do. And this is the, the lyrics of the song. She says, take a step, step again. It's all that I can do. The next right thing. I won't look too far ahead. It's too much for me to take. But break it down to this next breath, this next step. This next choice is one that I can make. So I'll walk through this night, stumbling blindly toward the light, and do the next right thing. And with it done, what comes then, when it's clear that everything will never be the same again, then I'll make the choice to hear that voice and do the next right thing. I love that. When it's clear that everything will never be the same again, that's kind of where we find ourselves. What is the new normal going to look like? Then I'll make the choice to hear that voice, God, and do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. What is the next thing that God has presented me with? Is it feeding the kids? Is it doing the work? Is it doing the shopping? Whatever the next right thing is, sometimes things are just muddy and unclear and confusing. So the next right thing is hear that voice, turn to God, and just do the next right thing. Thank you for being with me. I'd love to hear from you. You can find me again on my blog, Transform Our Hearts. You can find me on social media on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much. Bye-bye.